Welcome back to the Arbitress YouTube channel. In today's class, we'll be learning how to make a wedding tr dress train. Okay, so this tutorial is going to teach us how we can introduce train or volume to our flare dresses. So it's common between wedding dresses and the train differs depending on what you want. So it can be short or long depending on the events or what you want the train to be for. So now to do this, I'm going to be illustrating with this paper and then I'll show us how we will transfer this to our fabric and then how we are going to sew it. So the measurements you need that are very important for this tutorial is your waist measurements or where you want to put this, okay? In this case, I'm using the waist, but it can also be on the knee also, depending on where you want to play this flare. So now you need the circumference measurement of wherever it is you want to place this. And then I'm going to be using this small measurement because this is just for a tutorial. It's actually a requested video and I have to just do this urgently. So now the waist that I'm working with is 10 inches. Like I said, these are not the actual measurements. They are just for illustration purpose. Then the me next measurement you need is the length of the flare. That's how long you want the length flare to be which is usually floor length so you need to measure from your waist to your full length or wherever it is you want your flare to be and for this tutorial i'm working with 15 inches and then the last measurement you need is the length of the train okay of course the train is going to be at the back so now you need to note how long you want to remember we have different type of train we have from sweep to cathedral to church to whichever one it is you want to use so you need to note the length that you want to use for your train and for this tutorial i'm working with a length of 10 inches okay so now we're going to be working with a full flare for our for our for our flare we're going to be working with a 360 degree full flare and the measurement the calculation the formula for that is your circumference measurement that's your waist in this case 10 inches divided by 6.28 okay so this 6.28 is a constant so if you don't know how we, go up, we got this i have a detailed tutorial on how to draft different types of flare you can check that out so if i divide this now i'm going to be having around 1.5 inches and this is going to be the radius for my flare so now i'm going to move to the paper now we are drafting this on paper first then you can transfer this to your fabric so now this is going to be my starting point and then from there I'm going to so I'm measuring my 1.5 inches from there so if you are cutting this directly on your fabric you're going to be putting your fabric on fold okay but I'm cutting on paper first so I'm just going to measure the 1.5 inches and then because there's a train at the back and we don't want this train to get to the front so that the person can walk in this easily okay because you don't want your client to be trip to trip while walking so the train is just going to be at the back the front is going to remain the normal floor length measurement so now i've measured on 1.5 inches round and then from there i'm going to measure the full length that i want to work with and in this case that is 15 inches so from there now i'm going to measure my 15 inches all round also so I'm measuring 15 inches and then I'm cutting the front first so after cutting the front I'm going to use the front to cut out my back I hope we get that so now I have my 15 inches and then I'm just going to connect everything so after connecting it I'm just going to cut out this pattern and then after cutting it out I'm going to label it okay so this is my front so i'm going to label this my front pattern and then because this is cut on paper so you just choose one side now and then i'm going to label this side that it has to be on fold okay so when you are cutting this on your fabric you make sure that this part is on fold before you place it and then i'm going to cut out my radius also so because we are cutting the front and back separately and we are still going to be joining it together so you can add seam allowance here to join it to the back so you can add around half inch seam allowance to join it so now the next thing now is to cut out the back okay so cutting my back now i'm just going to manage the paper that i have here so i have a fresh paper here 
and then i'm going to be placing my front on it okay so this fold point now is going to be my center front also so this is going to be the center front where i'm adding my seam allowance are going to be this side where i'm going to be joining the back so on my paper also here this is going to be my center back and usually the center back is going to be having zipper allowance okay because a zipper is going to go through the back to make it easy for the wearer to wear it so the first thing i'm going to do now is to draw out my zipper allowance whatever inches that you use for your zipper allowance you note that and then you draw it out so after drawing out my zipper allowance like that i'm going to place my front pattern on it okay so on the center back area so now you can see my front pattern on it and then the next thing i'm going to do now is to trace out what i have there so you can use your same ripper i'm just going to use my marker to go around it like this okay so this is like a mermaid skirt and what we want to do here now is to introduce that long train that we want it to have at the back to the back panel okay so now i've drawn this house now i can keep my front pattern and then i'm going to note this as my back and here i'm going to note that i need to add seam allowance for joining this to my back panel also so now the next thing you need to do now is to add your train to this and to add our train remember we measured the length for our train so in this case i said i want to add a train of 10 inches okay so now where my actual flare measurement stops which is here i remember the flowingness the flowing effect that you're going to be introducing to this has to be on the center back so now the trend the length measurement now i'll go over to my center back where my actual flare stops and then i'm going to hide that 10 inches that i want to use for my train it's not compulsory that it's 10 inches remember i said this is for a tutorial so this is totally up to you so now i've added that strain of 10 inches to it as you can see i have 10 inches here so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect it from my 10 inches extra that i added here all the way to my side seam because it has to be the same on the side seam because we are still going to be adding the front and back together so you can use your free hand to do this or you try and look for a cuff that can take it for you so to just make this easier for me i'm just going to use my front pattern also as a guide on how to connect this so i'm just placing this then you can redraw it if you are not okay with what you have so see what i'm doing i'm pressing this hemp side remember it has a flare effect already so i'm just placing it on where my train stops and then i'm tracing out what i have there because my free hand may not be able to take everything all at once so i'm just going to continue like that and then if i remove it and see what you have so now from here i'm going to use my free hand to just connect it to what i have there okay so if the shape you have is not okay for you you can even broaden it here and then extend it anyhow it is that you want so now i have this now you can see that the sides remain the same because i'm still going to be joining the front and back together so now that i have this i'm going to cut this half so I'm going to cut the back together with the string. So you can see how easy, how easy it is to introduce that volume to your back panel to have your string at the back. So now I have this as my back and this as my front. So now when you're cutting this, you have to cut two of these. Okay. Remember, you are cutting the front on fold, so that's going to. This is just the half scale of the front, so you have to cut the front on fold to have the full scale of the front. And then, because of the zipper that is at the center back, you are going to be cutting two of it. So here, you note that you cut two. 
so this is what we have on this side you can see that the front and back matches so you just cut this now and then sew it on the side seam your front and back together and your train is ready so in another tutorial i may cut this on fabric but i just needed to quickly do this for the person that asked for it i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye